Is it Jan? Uh huh. It was said, I want to moderate the Amazon market. Okay. If I want to be a podcast. Okay. Bitch, because I have no clue if you ask what goes on the Amazon market. And I have a feeling that you guys are in the same boat as most of you are. I am a freak about researching these panels before I start. Uh, before I come, and it's because I want to have questions, and I want to have answers, and I want to know my panelists. And um, and the thing is, is when I was working on this one uh, this morning, I was thinking, wait a minute, I don't want to do too much research because if I don't know everything, I'll have a lot of really good questions. Um, so uh, I'm really excited that you guys are here. I I, I believe just with that marketing background that I have, that this is going to be super important for anyone that's trying to um, And anyone that's in PR, anybody that wants to help authors uh, get their numbers up, get their readership up, get their book out there. Um, now, it looks like we're missing one person. Angeline. Okay, and she's coming. But while she's coming, I'll go ahead and read off what we're going to talk about today. Um, it's the world's largest bookstore, but once you list your book on Amazon, then what do you do? Did you know they give you free marketing if you know how to work their simple system? In this panel, you'll discover how to pick the right categories for you to make the best sellers list, how to use tags properly, how to hit the top rated list without much effort and minimal sales, the value of reviews, the importance of pricing, and whether or not it pays to advertise. So let me ask this to kind of get a poll for you guys, uh, answer questions. How many of you have posted an ebook to Amazon or a book to Amazon so far? Have already done so. How many of you? Yeah, you, you've conquered the first step. Okay, um, I'm raising my hand, but I haven't yet. Uh, that's why I'm at this panel. And how many of you have not submitted a book on Amazon, but you might want to in the future? Okay, awesome. They are not hands up now. So uh, it, a lot of you have already done it, so you're probably really interested on the, in the how do we go? What do we do from here? Where we go? And that's awesome. And all of these panelists have submitted a book on Amazon and are selling books on Amazon, and they're going to help us today. Not just you, but me too. Uh, so I'm going to have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about maybe how about you hit on how many books that you have on Amazon and, um, and maybe touch on uh, which genre you're seeing the most activity at. How about that? Okay? We'll start with answering your question. Sorry, I'm. No, you're good. You're good. We can start with Quinn. If we can. Or not. I have no books on Amazon, so I can't okay. go. I, <laughs> go for it. Do it. Do it. Um, so we're just saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Angeline Case. Um, I have Enemy Within and Descended by Blood. I said that backwards. Descended by Blood's number one. Um, available. And it, the only genre, I only have one genre out right okay. now, and it's um, YA Paranormal Romance. Okay. Have you seen a lot of really good activity on Amazon? Um, the market is changing so swiftly. I can tell you that when I published Descended by Blood, it was a completely different market than it is when I published the, sec the second book, Enemy Within. Um, so it sh it's a completely different market. It's harder now to get people to read Paranormal than it was when I first when I published the first book. Um, I'm gonna pass the mic. Oh, okay. Again. The, I'm noticing now publishing the second book as the market has changed that although people like bloggers love me or and they love the second book and they waited a long time for the second book their mindset is just in such a different like a contemporary mode right now that even though they have the book um it's not the next book that they're reading when they finish a book they're still in the contemporary um phase like the t in love with the contemporary phase and usually when you go through book modes like that you don't you don't you kind of stay with the book for a while and so it just seems like so many people are in the different genre right now than YA Paranormal, which is quite a bit different than when it, when, yeah, when I published the first books. And, you know, that's just my experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I'm really loud. <laughs> You're a really loud well, there's a lot of people for it. Um, um, my name's Quinn Loftus, and I wrote uh, the Grey Wolf series and Elfin. Those are my two paranormal. And then I just came out with a YA contemporary called Call Me Crazy. Um, I will, I'm, I'm like Angeline. The paranormal young adult right now is just, it's just kind of phasing. Um, I do have, if, if you put them out like, what, two years ago? 
would that be yeah. 2010 when they were still very very popular 2011 okay when they were still very popular um, and you have that following you're still selling really well because they they committed to the to the series so I'm doing still fairly well with the Grey Wolf series um, people are very I mean it's really swung to the contemporary young adult contemporary and you can notice that trend because those are the ones getting put, picked up by agents um, those are the ones hitting the New York Times and the USA Today um, which is great. I mean, there's a, there's a huge market, and we can go that direction. But um, yeah, so those are my parents. Are we good? That's awesome. Good. Thank you. Here we go. Um, I'm Ella James, and I have four books in the um, Stain series. It's YA Paranormal Romance, and then here, which is also, it's YA Sci-Fi Romance. And I also have a new adult, um, sort of a suspenseful, steamy sort of book called Selling Scarlet. Um, and yeah, I totally agree with them. It's all about contemporary right now, um, and new adult is also really hot. So um, probably everyone already knows this, but new adult would be like sort of the college age um protagonist or whatever right so. and um and maybe let's clarify ya is is not about who you want the reader to be but it's about the age of your character yes. same thing with na new adult has nothing to do with the fact that an 18 year old or 19 year old will read it it has to do with that your protagonist is 18 or 19 years old up to 25 i think mm -hmm. yeah and they're usually going through sort of like that what you might see after college like the trying to figure out what they're going to do and that kind of thing. Is that right? You'll think. Yeah, okay. Um, my first question, uh, I'd like to kind of start on a fun note here. Amazon just listed new adult as a genre. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, awesome. go for it. Sorry. You can just start, Ella. You can start. Do it. Oh, okay. Well, I actually really benefited from this category when it popped up because I had tagged um, Selling Scarlet as new adult. And the first day that it came out, they sort of subdivided the romance list a little bit more and they added sports and new adult and some other stuff it was one of the first books on the new adult list so therefore the list wasn't very competitive yet because not many books were on it so even if my sales really shouldn't have even warranted inclusion on the list at this point now that other people are on it I think I was like number four and I was really excited and people were asking how did you get on the new adult list and I didn't initially know but after I knew I waited like a day to reveal that it was my tag so I could hold on to that little top 20 new adult list spot but anyway so I mean I was happy it was it was a lucky thing that I just had happened to tag selling Scarlet tagging is important right? um, and that's, yeah, it definitely important. can be really important um so okay. Okay. Quinn so you haven't done any no, no, new no. adults but I would love to know how you tag then um you, you know your genre and and how many tags you can use and, and all of that sort of information it's more like categories. they've changed well they've changed the tagging they okay. don't do amazon doesn't when you go into kdp to put in all your information on your book oh kdp it's okay just yeah kindle direct publishing which is um the self-publishing part of amazon right. um that's how you upload your book awesome. so that's where you put in um, all your information as far as your synopsis your um, little blurb the price the price um, and then now they've changed it to categories and you have five categories and within those um, some of them you can only say you pick um, uh, what's it? teen fiction Say you pick teen fiction it gives you another one then it gives you all the things in teen fiction um, chick lit okay. paranormal um, sci-fi dystopian it gives you all those so then you can pick that then on some of them it'll let you type in your own uh, like category some of them says that's all you get on that category um, but you get do you get five or three I think it, uh, traditionals get like seven yeah they get a lot traditional publishers get seven we get two Two, is it two? Yeah. Well, it's two or three. I'm not special. If, if you, you get five, five you I mean, I can't wait. So if you're publishing yourself, you get more. two categories. I think but if you're with a publisher, more. it's up to seven. Two on Amazon, and you get five on Barnes & Noble, I think. But Barnes & Noble listing is different. and different. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, it's different. So, um... It's, it's all good. Yeah, so typically... You, and it is important which categories you pick because Amazon, they do their little computer thing and they just stick you wherever you basically put yourself. Um, so it, if you put yourself in the wrong category, you're going to go to the wrong people and who are going to just completely skim up your book because it's not what they're looking for. Yeah, and sometimes Amazon 
will just put you in a category. Like, mm -hmm. um, Descended by Blood, My Vampires came from Croatia, and so it was ranking under Explore the World, which um, <laughs> is more like, you know, a travel book that I would think, like, you would find it there, but my vampire book was there, and so whatever, it's visibility somewhere, I guess, right? right? Awesome. So. Um, okay, I'm going to throw a question out. I want you guys to be thinking of questions that you have, though, because I want to make sure all of our questions get answered during the panel. Um, I, we, it is Amazon 101, so that's why I kind of wanted to go over the basics. Once you guys got your books on Amazon and saw them there, what was the very next step you did? Just one. I know you had lots of steps, but what was the very first step that, that you made once it was there? Once it showed up. Once it showed up on that page, did you just totally spread the link out? everywhere? <laughs> yeah. Link it. Link, link yeah. it. Yeah. Well, um, act, no, actually, what I did was I, and, but it's different than when I did the first book. But the first book, I wanted to make sure that it was going to be on there for a, the publishing date. Like, I just pimped that date really hard and said, this is when it's going to be out. And this was before a lot of, um, it was kind of still kind of early, I guess, in the indie mm -hmm. kind of thing, but it's different now. Now it's like they just put it out and spread. Everybody spreads the link and it moves like wildfire. But back then it was like a lot of indies didn't really use dates or whatever. But I used that really to my advantage. I said, okay, this is going to be the date, and I just really pushed that date hard. So it was up a couple of days early, but nobody was really buying it yet because they were just expecting it for that date. So I had everybody getting it at the same time and that gave it a really good push and ranking and made it a lot more visible because it's all about how many books you sell within the hour. Mm -hmm. Amazon's ranking changes every hour and so if you're selling more books that first hour, it's going to be visible a lot quicker yeah. on the, on the list. Right, and you get the recommendations quicker and you get on more of those other book lists that yeah. also bought. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. the customers who viewed this also bought this and so you're going to be on a lot of those lists those lists are huge for people finding your book in that same genre now do you, any of you know if there's a specific day of the week that's like the best day to put your book up and release it depends on who you ask well um like uh the traditional publishers from what i've heard at least tend to do tuesdays and so people who at some point think they might want to go traditional or something like that they are doing like more Tuesdays um, and I think otherwise people would do maybe like a Thursday or Friday yeah but I mean I, you could do it anyway like you could do it Wednesday and then maybe by Friday or Saturday your book would have uh, like sort of uh, Amazon would have pulled it onto those also bought lists so that's what happened when I released Selling Scarlet my last book um, it came out on gosh I don't even remember but I think it was maybe a Wednesday or Tuesday or maybe Monday one of the first days of the week and then I went to the beach that weekend and my family had this catastrophic beach trip I didn't even get online so I wasn't pushing the book and I had also raised the price to $3.99 and whenever it hit those also bought lists damage the book damaged was number one on Amazon and it was on the first page of people who bought damaged also bought selling Scarlet so it got into the top 100 without me even like being on the internet to push it and it was the also bought list because they populate after like being two seen. days being seen, being seen, yeah being it was yeah Th so those also bought lists are really a big thing yeah. so it takes two days to get put on the also bought list. i was gonna say it, how do yeah. you get put on that list yeah. 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 you'll see your book like what we'll do a lot of times again i'm loud wow <laughs> um Literally, when you go look at your book, because when you first put your book out there, like you check it, like how often? I check it constantly. Yeah. It's like click, 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 refresh, refresh. refresh. <laughs> so check it more than Facebook. You totally, no, totally. Yeah. You stalk yourself. So it'll immediately show up. Um, when, when you look at your book, it'll start showing up. People who have bought your book. Uh, and I don't know what the number, what, how much you've sold, how many you have. To, I need to check that next time. Like what number? Because we can check how many books we've sold. At what point your book gets put on them? Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and it really just, I don't know if there's any kind of strategy to figure it's... out how many books you sell to get on that books because some books that are selling really well, sorry, some books that are selling really well, like top 100 books, they're going to have other top 100 books because mm -hmm. those books are selling that much it's more. Too yeah. Sad. Yeah. You in the price it, but, it, but it really is based on who else is buying that book. So if, so if you're on a list, like if somebody just happened to, like, you know, publishing time. They were close together and it was in the same market and it just was very visible because of that book. Um, so it, I don't think that there is a way that you can really figure out, okay, well, if I sell this many, then 
and then, then I can be on this person's book or something. I don't think that there is a way to figure that out because each book, there's going to just, there's probably an algorithm and it's just very complicated. Well, and if it is an algorithm, it probably has to do with the categories you tag as well. And if they're the same as the categories that were tagged for the book that you're... Grouping. Not necessarily because... Really? Um, okay. I'm glad. See, I'm asking. Yeah, I'm you can have other genres and stuff completely different oh, books but it, like that that's why I've always believed before con contemporary new adult got re hit really big like is because I've always believed there's a huge crossover between paranormal and contemporary because there was always even though paranormal was the thing there was always contemporary books within those lists okay, more of that now. yeah yeah and you see it more now um just you know even with the paranormals it's like yeah, yeah. tons and yeah, tons and tons of contemporary now yeah so Oh, yeah. But one thing I want to, while sure. it's on my brain, because yeah, I forget really fast, a um, couple things. One thing you have to notice, and I didn't realize this, when you set a release date, with when you upload your book to go live, it takes about 12 hours well, the first time. Amazon. 12, yeah, for Amazon. That's Amazon. Most of the time. Most of the time, for the very first time you upload it. Now, sometimes you update it when you go to update it because you realize you screwed up something, like you spelled your name wrong. Um, <laughs> I didn't do that. No. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It is so sad. I know. It is so you get up sad. against those release dates, and you're just like you're freaking your, your out. Mind you're freaking is out. Not triggering at the same yeah. level. And yeah, it was, I can't It's imagine. bad. Okay. <laughs> so when you upload it the second time, and sometimes it takes two hours, but the very first time you upload it, you're looking at a 12-hour window at least. At least. I've waited 72. There you go. Oh, okay. And well, yeah, so you have to think about that because when you set a release date, it, people are expecting it to be up that day. Okay. The other thing is, I've noticed the time of day. It's my sales increase. This is just me. My sales increase in the evenings, like literally big time increase. So if you set your release, I for me, I'm trying to remember to set it where it comes out usually about six thirty, seven o'clock in the evening, because people are coming home. Oh, they've the had dinner. Day or the day before. Uh, the day before, because it'll take till that next day. I know, but when when are you? So like, say if I had it on the thirtieth, mm -hmm. it was coming out. Would I want it to be available the night of the 29th? Are you saying that? the day before the release date. You're saying that if you were at 6.30 p.m., you're pressing publish at 6.30 a.m. Is that right? Yes, because I need that 12-hour window. That's what I'm trying to say. I want it to come out in the evening, so I put it the 12 hours prior, which generally for me, that's what it's been. I mean, every now and then it's, lo yeah, every now and then it's longer. It just depends on how many books are getting submitted. Because they have to run them through their format and crap. And you get people mad because, like, you have, like, a cool Can I say following. crap? You can. Oh. It's okay. okay. I've been screaming poop. I say nipple a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So my question is, you don't get people upset because, like, you have a cult following. Like, you have totally loyal readers. And, I mean, some probably are, like, staying home from work on the release day because they're like, I'm going to read this book. i got to find out what happens to these people. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, it's not ready. It's not available until 630. Yeah. And you wanna... No, I just want to ask a question. Oh, yeah, okay. I thought she was one of your cult followers. Oh, I am. <laughs> I wouldn't be on a panel if I wasn't. But yeah. Okay. But what are you? What are you gonna ask? I was saying. I, I, I was wondering if you guys could like say like what kind of results you've had once you've mastered marketing. Like why it's important for people to be in this room. Or even where, what's where the difference? Start, what, where you started and what you learned that made a difference. Like, right. Can you please tell them like why you know like where you went from and where you. you start? You, I've you sold eight thousand copies in this amount of time. I just think I'm it's not <laughs> making this amount of money in one month. But, you know, like those kinds of things. So. Let's get a little more specific. Yeah. Let's and get like to the step meat. Step step we want to know everything about you. you. Can I have your step by step? It's going to take a little while to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll I'll try to start on that. No. Okay, um, well, let's see. All right, when I first put a book up, it was I think August or September of 2011, and I put a, an old book up that I never planned to do anything with just to see what would happen to it, and it was stained. And um, so then I left it alone because I had a son that had some health issues going on, and I was really. Um, consumed. It sounded like a fire alarm. I anyway, it's like um, all at the same time. Um, so I wasn't really concerned with stains. So it just kind of sat around on Amazon, and so people did start reading it at some point. I'm not sure how, and then maybe because I was on Facebook, but I wasn't on it a lot. <laughs> And then I put out, people wanted the second book, which I had not written, so I wrote Stolen. And things were kind of still trickling along, you know. I, I don't know anything about marketing at this point. I'm just doing these things, which is what so many people do, I think. And what are your numbers during that time? Do you remember um, anything? Like I know what my income was at that time, but I think you're not supposed to share your income. Um, 
Or are you? <laughs> it was okay. The first we want to sell. We want to know what you're making now. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. At least the, the first month, I didn't do the automatic deposit thingy, Majigger. I got a check, not real, not realizing that a check made out to Ella James would be uncashable because Ella James is not my name. But the wonderful thing is, I still have this check because I didn't cash it. I still have it, and I'm actually probably about to frame it. It was twelve dollars, um, and it's the only check I have because after that I had automatic deposit but I love it that I have that check it's so special to me that I have it and um I think the second month I made like 50 and then the third month I think I made like maybe a hundred so this is the first three months mm -hmm. and um and was at 99 cents at that time I don't even know. yep it, it probably was yeah. I was not thinking that this would be a business at all so um I was still planning to do traditional publishing and stuff like that until Another few months came around. But anyway, so um, so let's see. Oh, my gosh, I've gotten really off track. So we're trying to talk about what, how the marketing matters. Well, yeah, I guess, like, as I went on, I, I learned more. But if you know if you know how to, like, I don't want to say you can game the system because you can't at all, unfortunately. But, uh, but if you know these things to kind of help you get ahead, like, categories and how to, the keywords or whatever um, when you're doing the little publishing page then you can get way ahead so as I started to learn more things like each book that I put out I would apply those things and, and my income grew a lot I mean obviously but that's also comes with putting out more books and doing more like social networking but I think just knowing how to market them is super important so is that what I was supposed what to say well, can, I, well, 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 can I ask yeah. comparatively if you think about the first book that you put up on Amazon that you felt like you knew what you were doing okay so maybe like chosen stain okay. three so, <laughs> maybe so what was the difference in income for the first month of that release well okay first thing is it was the third book in a series so there's already people fans of two previous books are waiting for this right, book right. and Quinn if you want to talk about a series she is the queen of it she has made such a USA Today bestseller list right um, and she's writing paranormal which is like dead in the water right now so I mean that's Stop that's amazing that. Boo. sorry <laughs> well I, I mean it probably won't be in a few months but it has been a pretty like kind of not great few months for paranormal I'm just saying like Quinn blows out of the water even though people are typically not there so anything about she's series anomaly. talk to Quinn because she just I don't know I don't I personally know anyone that does that better than her but um but that was the third book in a series so my third book is it did better than the first two because it was the third but also I think I made like a few thousand that month as compared to like the 12, 12. um so you know how to do it right. there's a huge potential for growth like in the Amazon market for sure and now Quinn can tell you about that because <laughs> she's the, that phenomenon <laughs> okay um my first I, I published Prince of Wolves in um June of I think it was 2011, I think. Um, and my first month, I sold 10 books. And I was like, yes! Mm -hmm. And uh, the second month, I mm -hmm. sold 90. And then uh, the third month, which I will admit, I changed the cover, which I will cover is huge. huge. It's massive. The month that I changed my book cover, I sold 400 copies. The month before, I sold 90. So that just tells you right there, the cover is massive. It was 99 cents at the time. Um, and Georgia Cates did that for you. Georgia Cates, yeah, she did my cover. Um, so that would that was that was what two years ago. Yep. Um, now, which my Grey Wolf series has done really well, and I just praise God for that. Um, when Fate and Fury came out um, that month, I sold. And that hit the. What number of book is that? Right? It Fate and Fury. Yeah. I hit number eleven on Fate and Fury. So. Yeah. That's number six in my Grey Wolf series, and I sold on Amazon, which on Amazon I sell about 15 times what I sell on Barnes & Nobles. That just tells you where you're at on Amazon. Um, and I think I sold about 15,000 on when Fate and Fury came out. Um, so money-wise, um, you make what? You make 70%, $2.99 and higher, you make 70%. That's your royalty. Anything under $2.99, you make 35%. So you can kind of figure out your what you're making there because you can't expect to make. You say I'm going to make my book three ninety nine. You're not going to make three ninety nine. You're on your book. Um, so I guess that month I I don't know, I can't figure the numbers sixty thousand something like that. Um, 
But all of that with Amazon, Amazon really does help you if you know if you know how to. Now I didn't. The, I would say the first year I had no clue what I was doing. Honestly, I was bugging other people to help me. Hey, please tweet my book. Hey, this that. But when you when you do finally figure out that you hit the right tat or the categories, you hit the right categories. You make sure you're in the right spots because you want to be with other authors who are writing the same genre with you. Um, when you do that, it's just visibility. You need to be visible. And that's one of the reasons we're talking about hitting, uh, getting as many people to buy it at one time when it first becomes out. Because when it first comes out, people are looking for it. It's all about building it's, momentum. Exactly. Because it, it, you lose momentum fast as an indie author. Um, usually by the third month after your book is out, your sales are dropping pretty fast. And that's just because there are hundreds of books coming out a day. You, I mean, it's, a hum it's competitive. It's very, very competitive. So it's very important to hit it hard at the beginning so that you'll stay higher longer. Because um, then once you start to drop in your, in your rankings, once you start hitting the 2,000, 3,000 mark, your sales do considerably, considerably come down. So, and they just continue to die. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 do you tell us how to hit it hard at first when you first do it? Well, well, I mean, when you get there, I mean, you know. Okay, what was the question? How do you, oh. how do you get a good start right out of the gate with your oh, right. Okay. Okay. right. In your experience, like yeah. in two. Yeah, my experience with the first book was completely different than the second one but I need to tell you guys right now that I am calling it right now what's going to bring paranormal back as the it genre is going to be new adult paranormal romance yeah. I'm telling oh, you yeah, that right now so um so with the first book I did I did above like I'd say above average for most indie authors for the first book but I I, I started getting on social media and everything before I published the book. So I had eight months where I was like building that platform and building relationships with bloggers. Like I had started bloggers who just like started with bloggers who just had no following at all. And then by the time my book came out, they had a pretty good following. Um, so I did a lot of that, um, you know, garner relationships and stuff like that. And then I also did a blog tour. And the one thing that really helped me was a trailer because you, People haven't read your book. They don't know what kind of work you're going to have. But you give them a piece of something to have them feel something. Because, like, everybody has the blurbs, you know, and it's kind of just... You have to have something that kind of, at the time at least, that gives them something a little bit more. And so, find getting... And this was when bloggers were starting to be bombed with everything. Like, just people were sending them their books, and it was just crazy, and they were just feeling totally overwhelmed. But um, it made them come to me. Like, they saw the trailer, and they wanted to, to review my book so they would come to me and it would also I would send them the link in the email requesting it and they'd say sure it gave me an in and an advantage to people that I didn't know over somebody who just was saying hey here's my book this is what it's about um, so it kind of gave me more, more of an advantage I would say um, but what I would say is going on what I've learned since that first book is the neck the best thing that you can do for your book is get the next book out which I had spent way too long doing marketing yeah <laughs> sorry I spent way too long doing marketing and then I got burned out and then I had all sorts of issues yeah that was last panel before lunch um, <laughs> so yeah so the what I noticed was um, Descended by Blood it held very well for very long for like six months or something it like held like 500 600 700 range and um, it, but then it dropped and it dropped like substantially but until Enemy Within came out and then I saw a big crease like it descended by blood the sales still weren't amazing but it had doubled the month that Enemy Within came out like the sales on that doubled and so I really do believe that the best thing that you can do for your first book is get the next book out um, right now if, if I my goal my dream would be to write full time and have a book come out every three months, every three months that would be it's a bad idea. Well, that's my sales from the last one about three months. months. You're losing them. Like you've made you most of your big money already. Do you experience burnout at that rate? Yeah. I mean, uh, okay, Mark. I do write a good book. Not necessarily right. Well, um, I think though, for I don't know if it for for other authors. For me, I try. If I go days and days and days without writing, mm -hmm. I lose my momentum. Yeah. Big time. So for me, I couldn't. I don't know how authors put out one book a year, and because I just I would lose momentum. So, but every generally every three months, especially with the market growing the way it is, yeah. um, readers. Ha I mean, our attention spans are like you know two year olds. We read a book, 
And half the time, unless that book has really resonated, by the time we're, in, we're ending the next book we've read, we've forgotten what the plot is of the book that we read before. Um, so it's really important, if you're not keeping your name out there with new books, it's easy for people to stick you at the, at the bottom of their stack. Because there's just, there's, I mean, there's so many amazing indie books out there. There just are. Um, so I would say, every because by three months, literally, you can look at your rank. If you've been in the top 100, you've been in the top 1,000, 1,000 and under, by three months, typically your book is getting up into the 1,000, 2,000 range. That's just typical because you've got other books coming in, taking in your spot. Mm -hmm. So if you can get by month three, if you can get out another book, bam, your name's back out there. People are like, oh, yeah, I read that book. And da, da, da. all your stuff gets lifted up by that. You yeah, know, your sales come back. But I was... Oh. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to forget this, but then I was going to say, like, okay, if you're just starting out and maybe you can't put out a book every three months, like you have a job or you have kids or you're just not that fast, it's not like you can't ever build a career out of it if, if that's what you want to do, build a career out of it. It's just that at some point, you know, you would have to kind of like launch up to that next level if you wanted it to be like a full-time career. So I guess, yeah, I wanted to be sure that we said your all hope is not lost if you can't put out a book every three months. You know, you could even, um, someone was saying that they had had a lot of success with um, putting out three books that were all finished at the same time. So you could like hoard a couple of books and anyway, you wanted to ask something, right? Yeah, um, I, I noticed that some authors don't have author pages. And I'm just wondering if you could touch on, on, Amazon. on Amazon. when to build it, how important it is to your sales, what to should put it, on it. And, and I've heard that you should go ahead and do it if you're writing, even if your book isn't finished yet. Correct. Go ahead and get your name get your out name there. So you can have an author page yeah. before you have your first book. Yeah, you can set up a KDP account. Well, go ahead. I don't. I didn't, I didn't know that you could have the author page if you had nothing out yet. But you, you probably, you might, if you think that you can, then you probably can. You have to have KDP first. And you can set up a KDP account with that okay. before uploading a book. Okay. Yeah. And I guess her question also, they might have not heard. No. Um, you can set up a KDP account before you upload, because you have to have that before you upload a book. So you can set that, say you're not, you're not ready to put your book up yet, but go ahead and set up that account, because that's going to kind of get you. And we're thinking it allows you to set up an author page. It might, I can't, I don't know that for sure, so don't quote okay. me. But, but the one thing it does, it gets you on the forums, in the KDP forums, okay. which is your, you hear other authors are on the forums. Yes, honey. Um, I had self-published, mm -hmm. and I did the KDP, and then I had the author page, mm -hmm. and then after I got picked up by a publisher, I took it down. So I have nothing on the, I have no books published under my account, but the author page Same. is well, still there. What? It's through Amazon's Author Central. Yeah, that's so, what I was going to say. Is it's Author <laughs> Author Central, and you can go into your Author Central account yeah, so even if you have a published book, a, published a traditional book. published yeah, book, yeah. and you can say, "This is my book. I am the author. Connect it to my page." Right. Use the book cover for your profile picture, even if it's not out yet. Yeah, let everybody. How know that. how important is that to your sales having that author page up and? Some people, that's properly. how they find you. Yeah. Some people yeah. look for you by your name, not your books on Amazon. Right. And if they have, if you have an author page, it tells them your books, it tells them your bio. You can list your your blog. On and one thing is, is like if you just do a search on the Amazon search, like if you notice how you've lo you're looking for an author and you type in the author's name other books that aren't that authors will show up sometimes before right around it so if you want um, readers to find your other books without having to search through a lot of lists of other people's books then you really should have an author central um, and you can do you want to go to the Amazon UK page and set up another author central because author central across the different websites it's not cross panel like it is in KDP where you could just load your book up once and it goes to all the other websites. You have to go to each individual page and set up your author central page with on that website. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing that I wanted to add with what she said earlier is even if you can't get a book out every three months, it, if you're doing it because you love it, like I work full time, I was going to school full time, mm -hmm. and I'm right, trying to write a book as well. And like she said, I you just lose some momentum and it's really hard to get back in it and try to figure out where you were. But I love what I'm doing and I'm going to do it in whatever capacity that I can do it. Like, yeah, eventually I would like to be able to write full time and support myself doing that. But until I can do that, I'm just going to do it in whatever capacity that I can because I love it. Um, can yeah. You, can you expand? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and ask a question. So I'm totally packed with questions. How do you link all these things in Amazon? Because I just uploaded to like Space and then it's not quite linked to the. You uploaded to what? 
Author Central. Have you gone into Author Central? In Author Central, you can email them about stuff and you can say, look, here's my paperback and it's not linking to my ebook. Please link it and they'll link it. Most of the time, it will happen automatically, but if it doesn't, then you have to ask them. Yeah. And is that true for linking that site to like Cause they bought it. Yeah. making sure like all those What's that? Is that, sure, is that true for making sure that then those things in turn populate Goodreads and yeah, Amazon is on its own. Goodreads is separate from Amazon. Right, right. Well, Amazon yeah. did buy Goodreads, well, so a lot of it. Yeah. 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 So some of the information is transferring over from yeah, Amazon, and yeah, some of the stuff is connecting. But, but you guys but, find that it doesn't connect, and you just have to like, you have to tell them. Yourself. Yeah. S support desk. <laughs> yeah, like if you go into Author Central and you say it'll say contact us, then you can kind of say what the issue is about. I've had friends that have had it where their paper book paperbacks are not connecting to their ebooks, and they've just emailed them, and then it'll link it. But like I publish my paperbacks through Lighting Source, which is a different um, POD publisher, and it happened automatically. POD is so, publishing on demand. Yeah, publishing on demand. So. And we had another question back there. Well, it's kind of the same. I had a series that came out, and then I had another one, and like when you searched it, it wouldn't come up. So is that what you're talking about? I need to email them. About you need to email them. And I should tell them to like link it to the other books, or is it just like link it to my name? Like I don't know. Well, you would open an, an Author Central account, and then you would um, when you go in there and you click on there's a tab at the top, like it says, like you can look up your where your sales are and where in the country it's been selling and stuff like that, in a chart of all your sales and stuff. It has a lot of author tools, but if up at the top tab it'll say books and if you don't see any books you there's like a search thing and you can type in your book and it'll pop up and you can say this is my book connected to my account okay, and I don't think I don't you I'm not sure each book individually. yeah you have to do this to each book to add it to your name I, I would probably email them about that if it's not coming up on a search and it's the exact name of a title. Yeah, yeah. And I would talk to Amazon about that because that's a, like a faulty search. Right there. Uh -huh. Yesterday, Ella, you were in a workshop and you said that when you were here for your first time last year, someone told you things that helped you really increase your sales. And you said you would tell us today, so. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, let me think. Can you um, Yes. Uh, she said that I said in another panel that um, people told me things here last year that helped me increase my sales a lot. And what were those things? And um, I'll, I'll try to tell you as many of them as I can remember without taking like all the time for the panel. But um, let's see. Remember that last year I had like maybe I think two books out in a series, and it was YA Paranormal, which was really hot at the time. Not that it will never sell again if it's not hot. I think Janet wanted me to emphasize that. But um, but I think the third one was coming out like soon, maybe. That's, I don't even know my own timeline. So that's where I was. So this advice was for somebody in that position. But they said um. Be be sure that the first book in the series is either free or 99 cents. If you're a new author, people are generally not going to pay $2.99 for your first book in the series because they're taking a gamble on you. And so um, they told me that. Um, hmm. You. Yeah, maybe. I think you might have. Yeah, it was her. And she helped me set up my Twitter account. And, um, Twitter. I and Twitter. yeah, it taught me how to tweet even. Like, I had no idea. But, um, so that was super helpful. I was already doing Facebook. I think people really told me, like, Facebook and Twitter matter so much. Like, do it. And so that was super helpful. I mean, I would say that's almost, like, the most important piece of advice I've ever gotten is that. And I'm not even great about updating my blog, but Facebook and Twitter, they are very important. And then I'm trying to think, Quinn um, puts a, a snippet from Stain, the first book in my series, in the back of one of her books. And um, and I put hers in mine, which didn't probably matter that much for her. But, um, <laughs> but that was huge. If you can, like, you can't just go up to people that you don't know, obviously, and ask them to do that for your book. Because it's not um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if you know someone... 
and you like build a relationship, if you if you ever have that kind of opportunity, any kind of networking with another author that's similar to you is um, huge. And I think that was really important for me last year. And then um, what is y'all? What did, what else was I told? Oh, Abby Lyons told me that my covers were not good and my books would not sell, but she was very tactful. Um, yeah, my covers were not terrible, but they just weren't great. And if you want to sell, they need to be great. You need to probably even. I hate to say this, but unless you have a best friend who's a fabulous designer, you probably need to be paying. Some, you need to be paying most of your money for your covers, and it's gonna be like at, at least a hundred dollars, I would think. Way like more, way more, probably way more. I mean, yeah, if you paid. <laughs> 300 200 to 500 you're not getting a bad deal if you've got a really good cover artist that is huge and see I didn't I really just didn't know that you would think that you would know that but I didn't know that um and the books were selling just not as well as they did after the covers were changed um you go do it go for it Oh, I just wanted to say too, though, that it's not just covers. Like you should spend money on editing. That's important yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> very, very important. Yes. All right. Any question? No. Yeah. In general, it was your friends. Have any of you utilized the KDP Select stuff, and have you had? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what we were going to talk about. Repeat the question. The question was if we, any of us have utilized the KDP Select, and if we've seen results from that. KDP Select is a different beast than it was when it first came out because it there's almost a flood in the free market right now, but when it first came out, you could put your book for free and it would skyrocket. Yeah. And you would be able to ride that once it got onto the paid for a while. And you would, like, I did that with Descended by Blood. Um, it was ranking very well in the UK. More, It was selling more than it was in the US. And I was very, very nervous to put it on the free list because it was going to change that and it was going to move it to different places and you know one of the panels I talked about earlier was don't be afraid to try different things so I tried it and I had my best month in sales ever since like at that point coming off of the free list because it was so visible it takes a while for the algorithm to take in the slowdown of sales and so you can ride the wave a little bit um, when it goes back on to the price and the, there's a lot of things that people do, like when they put it on free, like right before the weekend, a Thursday and a Friday, like if you do two days in a row, like a Thursday and a Friday, you that, that'll give you a little bit bigger of a push. So it comes back on, so it's very visible when it's the weekend and people are buying books. Um, that's one strategy. Um, but now it's a little bit different because you can have a free book, but it's competing with a lot more free books. So unless it gets on that free, top 100 free, it's hard to get a lot of visibility. Um, unless you do like a book blur or like a pixel of ink ad, um, which you're paying somebody to, that has a lot of views on their website showing that your book is free. And that'll generate a lot of um, traffic to your book. Um, and then what else about free stuff? Oh, and to get your book free, if you don't do Kindle Select, you, it takes a really long time now because you would have to put it free on like Smashwords or another vendor and then report it to Amazon for Amazon to price match. But because Amazon doesn't make a lot of money when that, they, Amazon kind of has to has a payment for every time somebody downloads a book. And so if you're giving a book away for free, Amazon's not making any money off of that and they're incurring a cost. And so they they take longer to match the price of free books because they don't like it. They're losing money with the free books. And very rarely they will ever like do it. I know a few Sometimes people you do it who. On smash words. Then yeah, I, I know at least one person though who at least tells me that their Amazon just won't sit there. So it's it's like I guess I just wanted to say Amazon doesn't have to do it. They do it. I think like ninety eight percent of the time if you have it free somewhere else. Take a month but I guess months. like don't you know, like, depend on yeah. them doing it, I guess. It um, depends on how many people report that it's free. Yeah. If you have, like, 100 people go right now and say, it's the, free here, it's free here. The more people day. report it, it usually speeds it up, I think, yeah. I have a platform to do it first, mm -hmm. and then I use Barnes & Noble and reported that to Amazon. It sped it up much more quickly. I think they care more about Barnes & Noble than about Smashwords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. There's someone else's hand over well, there. That was I was going to say. Smashwords isn't enough because, yeah, so if you just report free on Smashwords, they don't. And iTunes, they, they care about iTunes. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it does. It really does take forever. Uh, Any more questions question? out there? Yes. Mine, I'm just following up. Do you guys, um, would you guys, um, your advice, prefer to do the cave, you know, the, the select? And because then I've noticed, like, you know, Barnes and Nobles to me has been worth, you know, like it's kind of twice less than. And I thought for my next book coming out, just do that, cave, you know, the select. <laughs> I, I haven't done select, so I don't. You haven't tried it, yeah, because you do very well yes, everywhere. No, I just, I'm lazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you do every very well but everywhere. And, and tell me, I mean, what is the what is the difference between me do, choosing KDP Select versus well, you just setting that? You can't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. You, so you're so you're selecting Amazon and nobody else. Amazon is your only vendor. You can't. And when it first came out, there was a lot of confusion about, well, can I have giveaways with bloggers because people are getting my book from somewhere other than Amazon, and I'm thinking that in the small print that's technically a no-no but Amazon's not going to come after you because the more you promote the book the more Amazon gets basically but um, so did that answer your question? No I'm just wondering if you guys you would recommend either sticking with the normal and going to Barnes and Nobles and Smashwords or sticking with um, You kind of have to play around with it if you've never done it because if you're making a lot of money through other vendors Barnes and Noble, iTunes, Smashwords then you're probably not going to want to just do Amazon because you have a lot of readers in those markets that are finding you. Um, Amazon, I just did it for the one 90-day period. You have to go exclusive with Amazon for 90 days, um, and you have to take it off all the other vendors, and um, so then it's only available through Amazon. And Barnes & Noble readers, I realized that it's, it's di like the readership is a little bit different Like for a while there. Um, my book did better on Barnes & Noble at $2.99, where if I tried to do that at Amazon, it dropped. So the market at, um, at Barnes & Noble sold better at $2.99 than $0.99. Cents. And so you just have to play with the different markets and stuff. And what, I, when you get, if you're not finished, I also want to know what price ranges have worked best for your books. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so, and that's another thing as well is you have to kind of find the balance like when I first published I was going for readers not money and so I priced it really low because I wanted people to be reading the book but when when my book got to a certain point where it just was dropping 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 I changed the price and it's just balanced out so if it's gonna if I'm gonna sell the same amount at 99 cents or 299 I'm gonna put it for the 299 because it doesn't you know as an author my goal is to work home work from home and write full-time so I'm gonna do if it's not hurting me and I'm not losing readers, then that's what I'm going to do. And you look at your competition. Right. And you look at your competition as well, okay. at what they're selling. So what price range has been the most successful for each of you? Two ninety nine is my is the most for me, um, which is generally, I think I have one book at three ninety nine, but I do really well at two ninety nine. Um, ninety nine cents does do well. I actually did. When I put, and this is like you're saying, when you put the free, free is a little bit harder to do now, but when, like when I put Prince of Wolves free, the first week I put it free, I had 50,000 downloads. So, but it's a little, it is a little different now because it has kind of gotten flooded. Um, but, but it's it, flooded almost to the point where you have to put the first one. You do, you do. Um, exactly, because it, it hooks the reader. They, and there's just a huge, when my husband told me when I did that, he said, that just shows you how many people are not willing to pay for a book right now. Because there's such a large... You don't have to pay $9.99 for a book anymore. You can pay $2.99. Um, but yeah, $2.99 is, is where where I'm at right now. That is good. Do you have um, Yeah. Uh, well, it's just a quick question. Do you ever um, give the first half away for free and then leave them suspenseful and then sell the second half? Like the, uh, I have, you, can't, you can't do that on Amazon. They require the full. Yeah, but you can, like, on, I'm sorry. On a Smashwords, you can select the percentage that you want to do for free. Like, you can do 10%, 15%, whatever, on Smashwords. Um, on Amazon, they automatically, any self-published author automatically has to put 15% of their book up for a pre-read. Is it 15 oh, or 10? It's all books. You like can download a sample of any book. Yeah, a sample. Oh. You, you don't have the option to turn that off. That's kind of, um, of course, and what you do on your blog or your website is your own choice or whatever but that does I mean people readers love to get it's usually about the first three chapters that they get depending on the length of your chapters I should say does that help I think that's about right yeah um let's see yeah, but I was going to ask if anybody else has a question that you have yeah. more oh yeah, yeah how long question. are your same volume one volume two how long are the books how many pages uh, well a novel is considered typically an I feel like I'm saying that. A novel typically is about 70,000 over is what they consider a, a full-length novel. Anything under that. Words. 
70,000 words, I'm sorry, and I don't know, honestly, like a Word document has 240-something well, words on a page. It font you're using, your spacing, spacing, your margins. And all that, yeah. So... Um, but it's, but it's also like middle grade books are YA. 40 to 60,000, exactly. YA is 60 I to 100, say. and adult is like 70 to yeah, 100. Urban like fantasy is yeah. going to be longer. It can, yeah, so exactly. It just opens longer. You can Google it. Yeah. It's usually free. <laughs> it all depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. How long do you, like, if you're going to change a price plane or a category or something, like if you're playing with stuff to find out what works, how long do you need to give it before you try something? A time frame. What would you say? Um, usually, yeah, usually a couple weeks, a month. But if you're seeing, like, if you're changing your price, it's kind of fast. Yeah. So tell them, tell them too. Every time you upload it, it drops your ranking. Yeah. So every time. Okay, so what what I would do is usually about a month, but if I'm seeing if I'm trying something to kind of see how it works and I'm just seeing it bomb, I'm like, oh crap, I need to change this and fix it, or you know. And you can play around with the different categories too, the different lists that you want it to be on, because a lot some lists are lists are way more competitive than others. Like if you look at the new adult category, it's books that are not even ranking into the one thousands; they're all under the one thousand. But you go into like maybe a fantasy list or something, yeah, and there's like it goes up to 5,000 ranking and so the book's going to be more visible on the list so if you're not seeing the kind of sales or the kind of visibility that you want and you're kind of in a range that you could be seen on the list go into your KDP account and change what you're categorizing it as and it can hit lists and get more visibility that way I did a lot of that with um, Descended by Blood as I would really play with lists to kind of see where, where was the best visibility um, within that within the different categories um, for the market. And what did you say about um, re-uploading it? Um, yeah. Every t every time um, you upload your book, uh, it drops your it drops your ranking where your book is ranked. And I I'm not really sure why because like you're you, still sell it. It's still selling. Yeah. It's like a new version because what what happens is I think what goes into the um, algorithms I love is that word. yeah <laughs> algorithm. <Thank you. laughs> One thing that goes into that is I think um, when people highlight within your book. Um, yeah, and you can see it at the bottom of the Amazon page. So if you upload a different version of the book, like you have typos and stuff, and so you're like, I need to upload a better version or something like that, or you spell your name wrong, <laughs> and you lose those highlights and stuff on the page. And so I think that that somehow come goes like has a small effect on the algorithms, and so things kind of will wobble for a little bit until it kind of smooths back out again. Right That's what I'm saying, yeah. because, like, I seriously, okay, the name being spelled wrong, which I did not do, um, <laughs> I waited, I waited until my rank kind of edged up, because I didn't want to lose my spot, because people pay so close attention to that, you know, you want to stay as low as possible, so you have to think about that, if you're re-uploading, if you're like, oh crap, I gotta re-upload again, oh crap, I gotta, you're changing, you're, you're climbing yourself up the ladder, so that's something to pay attention to, yes, go ahead. I actually had um, a couple of tips that, that worked really mm -hmm. well for me, so Okay. Yeah, yeah, tell us. One of the, okay, two tell things. Us. Firstly, um, if you have your books on Amazon, buy them yourself on your own Kindle because then your books are listed in other people's also bought because it will go along. Say you buy lots of other young adult or you might buy new adult. Mm -hmm. Your book is then listed on your also bought mm -hmm. for those oh, That's people. true. I've seen that. So, that they'll, <laughs> so it becomes more visible. Like, <laughs> like on the author page and um, that sort of thing? Or no, just no, on just your like, account? Yeah, okay. on your back account. Yeah, so you buy it, you just bought that right. book and then it gets added to your also bought list. And another thing I did which worked really well when I released my romance novel is I did giveaways that I I gifted them through Amazon, Amazon yeah, because exactly. then those people are getting the gift and it goes on there also also more. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But you're paying for that. Yeah. You're you're paying for that. Yeah. Now you pay for that. You pay for that. But you pay two ninety nine. You get the twenty the seven dollars back. So it's two ninety nine. Cents. True, true. So, right, but depending on how many you're giving away, like I give away so many copies that that yeah. would just. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you talk about reviews? The importance of I am so glad you brought that up. Uh, the la that'll be the last thing we talk about. Um, she asked, how do reviews impact your positioning on those lists? I really. Okay, I'm so going to address this. Yes. Y'all just get ready. Focus, people. Okay. <laughs> reviews. Reviews on Amazon, Goodreads, they're vital. 
massive, huge, because people look at four and five stars and they pass up anything under that typically. Some people are three stars and they're okay with that. Um, but if there's one bad, okay, well, I say one bad review to ten good reviews. It takes ten good reviews to make up the, to one. Make up the one bad review. And that's, you know, that's massive. I know, right? <laughs> Hello. Okay, so it's very, very important. And I told this in um, the panel I was in yesterday. I give away a lot of free books. Um, I always tell people I give them to. This is not contingent on anything. I'm not asking for you for anything. I'm just saying thank you for giving my book an opportunity. If I get an email from a reader, I get a, a tweet from a reader that said, I read your book, I love it, it's fantastic. My first response is, thank you. Thank you for reading my book. Thank you for giving me the time of day. My second response is, if you don't mind, would you please give me a review? I don't, and if they say no, that's cool, no problem, no big deal. Um, but the reason I'm bold enough to do that is because the, li give me the word, the Algorithm. fewer, oh, I like that word, the fewer amount of reviews that you have, um, the more chance you have people passing your book up. They just, a lot of people really base their their um, purchases off of what other people say about your book. So, I, I mean, I stress that. Yes, please go. Um, if you've noticed, if, you, if you're a stalker on Amazon like I am, I'm a total Amazon whore, um, you'll notice in the reviews, like, Amazon is changing the way that does the reviews. It used to do the three most helpful and then all the newest yeah. to the right. They're changing it so it's like eight of the most newest. So uh, probably because Amazon's like wicked smart. So it's probably because they're, the people are wanting to see the most helpful more than the newest. And so they're probably selling more sales. But you'll notice how some books who have been kind of steady, now that the different reviews are being more visible, how some of the rankings are changing because of Amazon has changed that a little bit. And so so just the, the, the organization of how the reviews are makes a huge difference of how the books sell. Mm -hmm. So reviews are key. But good reviews are key. Good reviews. Yeah. But you don't want just all good reviews because if no. it's all good reviews, it, people don't trust that. They have to have, yeah, they have to have a just, um, discrepancy of reviews and, um, but, yeah. so yeah. You, you want, want to, to be real. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, want to be real. I, you don't know, ask your friends. Dude, when I read my reviews, I'm like, yeah, that is not a real person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know what I was supposed to be saying. Um, say it. Reviews. Oh, reviews. Oh, uh, I don't know what I have to say about reviews. Let's see. Um, they are important. You will like for them to be real and not fake. Um, really, I mean, there's, I mean, I know that probably most people wouldn't consider fake reviews, but there's many reasons to not do them. And I would say probably the number one is that Amazon often like will catch people and throw them out. So, so that would be bad. Um, <laughs> if it, in case it ever seems tempting, because I mean, maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't, but yeah the review should be real and people can tell I think if it's like your sister reviewing because it's not the same type of review that a real review would be and people want that they want to know that real people have read it and liked it and so the best thing that you can do for yourself I think is lots of Facebook lots of Twitter lots of networking and just you want your book to be visible like on Facebook if you if it's free like one of the things I wanted to say earlier and I think I didn't get a chance was that if you do have a free book even though free isn't quite as awesome as it used to be because there's so many more people you can blast that link around and say hey look here's a free book it's got 4.4 stars um based on 50 reviews and people you know people like that and there's a free ranking there's a ranking for free books. yeah there is a ranking for free books and there's you can still be on lists with free books right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i have one and it's on lists um, are, are y'all okay with sticking around for a few minutes? We've we've got two minutes between panels because we've got to start the next one. But thank you so much for coming. If you have more questions, I know these ladies are Facebook super or something nice, and we'll either tweet you back or answer your question in the hallway or something. Thank you. Thank you.